an appointment. Uh -huh. You've been told you can come and see the man. And you're being stopped downstairs. Uh -huh. And you're like, what, 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 why am I being stopped downstairs? Uh -huh. say, <laughs> you then say to Mugabe when you got in uh, that you're being stopped. And he say, Robert Mugabe said, oh, those two are just overzealous and insecure handlers. They fear your growing influence and impact. And those two were Chiwengwa and Nangagwa. Uh -huh. Talk to me about that. You see, 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 these uh, plotters have uh, been plotting for a long time. Every time you get close to Mugabe, they were worried about that because they were thinking succession. So although I was an outsider, just the fact that Mugabe had respect for me, had time for me, worried these people. To the extent that Mnangagwa tried to stop a meeting, an official meeting that Mugabe had called, by asking security people to stop. And I had to use, you know, brute force to to just push the security guy, I could have been shot, and, and got in. And um, Gabi laughed about it. He said, look, these are psychophants. Uh, they are worried about you getting close to me because they think influence comes from closeness. And so and, and so you find that the, 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 they were manipulating the old man by access, limiting access from people. So Mugabe was very contemptuous of these people. All right, it's a beautiful morning. Welcome to Ruby and Sensat, our podcast. I'm super excited today and I can't wait to hang out with you all. Um, first of all, I want to say to everyone who subscribed recently, thank you. I appreciate, I can see all your comments, absolutely inspiring. And also to those that have come across this channel for the first time, I'm not asking you to subscribe. Make sure you turn on the notification button because you don't want to miss any of the content that I drop right here. This place is your home. Let's hang out together. I'm really excited. All right, so we are looking at such a powerful, I call it, um, you know, mind-blowing interview that Mr. Tambra had. You know, he recently wrote his memoir, which is really being sold like hotcakes, and I just can't wait to get my hands on it because, um, you know, I, I haven't really uh, get a copy yet, but I get to just check some stuff on the internet. And really, it, it's full of um, so much, you know, history that I would wish every Zimbabwean get to read. Um, but most importantly, we're going to go through some of the clips that, uh, um, you know, I extracted from in conversation with Trevor, but it's very important that I'm very sure that we can all be having a good time together and get to unravel so much that has been going on in Zimbabwe from the leadership of Robert Mugabe, which he was a prime minister, and to where we are today with uh, Mr. Mnangagwa. Take a listen to the first clip. You've been generous with Nelson Chamisa which is fair enough. You've been harsh with uh, uh, Emerson Nangagwa, and I think you're right, I agree with you. What's your assessment of the other players? For instance, uh, um, Tyson Kasukuere, what's your assessment, and Omwon Zora, what's your assessment of those other players? We must always be respectful of the man or woman in the arena. When someone steps up to the plate and say, I want to make a difference, I want to participate, that's highly honorable. We must always respect that. So I have tons and tons of respect for Muzembi and Kasukwere. They have said, we want to be players, we want to make a difference. That's honorable. Um, however, we must also be very careful not to get caught up in ZANU-PF factions. What Kasukwere is doing is a continuation of the ZANU-PF factions before the coup. Of course, he's got a right to do that. But it's not the opposition in Zimbabwe. Mm. It's not the bona fide opposition to Zimbabwe. It's not the solution to Zimbabwe. ZANU-PF created the challenges we're experiencing in our country. And ZANU-PF cannot solve it. Mm. Kasukwere and Mzembi have been part of ZANU-PF for 37 years. And they're only, you know, fighting because they lost out in their factional fights. Mm. They can't be the answer for this country. Mm. There are people in this country, in Triple C, who have been active from 1999 in the opposition, 23, 24 years. There are people who have been active for 35 years, some of us from the student movement in 1988 to now. There is a bona fide opposition in the country with a track record of opposing zanu -PF. And We must show them some respect while we accommodate. And by the way, ZANPF must not stop Kasukwere from participating. We cannot use a law 
to stop a Zimbabwean from being a candidate. That must be opposed. But at the same time, we must know the history of all the players. Uh, and this is quite a very interesting in interview, to be honest. And uh, I thought it's so imperative for me to pull out some um, clips and just be able to elaborate in terms of what can we learn from um, the stories or from the issues that are weighing down right now in Zimbabwe, especially the entrance of Mr. Kasukure and the history of Zimbabwe in general in terms of the political space of Zampia. So number one thing that I would say is that um, we all know, right, I mean, it's known across the board that uh, Trevor don't really like Nelson Jamiza. Maybe I'm reading it wrong because, you know, you never know what's going down with politicians because they can say this today and tomorrow you see them kissing each other and hugging <laughs> <laughs> drinking coffee and by the way these are mature people you never know what they're thinking maybe it's just a political mantra who knows what but we also know that trevor once been the president Idi Munangai was advisor but because of his principles he dropped i mean and i respect him for actually standing up and made that decision but i wanted to point out that him and chami san you know he doesn't really like I said, they're politicians. You never know what they're thinking. You know, you must be very careful. So the entrance of Kasukure has brought quite a number of, um, you know, of factors in. And people are wondering what's going on. But as far as I'm concerned, I would really love Kasukure to bite a chunk from uh, ED. I would love that. So that at least we are able to have a better Zimbabwe for all. Because then my candidate to stand a chance also because i know for sure that chamisa will win election but you know the people that we are dealing with but i'm not afraid about what they're going to do i'm more concerned about the success of my candidate right but i have so much respect for sylvia kasukure i'm a firm believer that anyone who feels that god has called them to be a leader please go for it it does not matter you want to be zan pf or you want to be monzora if you know you have what it takes to lead the people of zimbabwe to get into Kenan. Please rise up. We'll give you support. We'll love you. But remember, I only have a vote for one person. It's like the person is Nelson Chamisa. But at the end of the day, I support everyone who can come to play the part. Now, we have an issue of Zone PF being a, being a challenge right now. Now, what I would want to say to everyone is that we should all pull out one lesson from the issue of Kasukwiri that, you know, there's power in, um, in um, company. The command that you keep, there's so much power in it. Today we are sitting with Sevia. We have to carry the burden of Zanpiev because he wants part and parcel of a regime that has been brutal and toxic towards the people of Zimbabwe. What a sad story. You know, he's he really does have a gift. And I can see him. He has put so much good in his heart to serve the people of Zimbabwe. But there is a track record that people do not want to let go of. And it's going to be harder for us as a people of Zimbabwe, based on the pain that we have been through. It will take generations for us to heal. You know why? Because it took us two generations to actually be out of the same pain. We are praying and making sure that we are out of this toxicity very soon. Right? Soon. In days, actually. Because the elections are coming up soon and we'll do anything in our power to pull ourselves out of the mud. Now, there's an approach of Gukra Hundi, which I completely agree with what Mutambara is saying. Thumbs up. Um, should should we not just say let the people decide who's going to who's who's going who's going to run and who's going to be elected? I, I'm afraid that we're now creating a, a situation where there's some people are supposed to own the IP to being in opposition. Mm -hmm. Do you want to push back? I, I, I understand where you're coming from very clearly. We don't want a culture of entitlement in our politics, but I'm making a different point. I'm talking about people coming from ZANU-PF becoming our saviors. People coming from ZANU-PF talking about Gugra Hundi. ZANU-PF implemented Gugra Hundi. So a ZANU-PF activist who executed Gugra Hundi has no moral authority to prescribe solutions on Gugra Hundi. Joe Block, Joe X, who comes from Norway, can do anything. Even with zero history of activism. I'm not saying show me your record for you to be an activist. Mm -hmm. But I'm saying your baggage, your history must be taken into account when you step up to the plate to be a player. Otherwise, we end up with uh, missed opportunities where we get caught up in internal fights <laughs> that belong to ZANU-PF. 
where people have no agendas to actually solve national issues. But we, we, we're not saying that uh, the longer you've been in the struggle, uh, the more bona fide you are. No, we're simply saying it is important that your history I and your you. back is taken into account. Okay. And things that are sensitive, like Gukula Wundi, for example, I would want to hear from Matibeleland. Mm. What do they want? Maybe mm. they want to know the truth first. They want to know the perpetrators. Maybe they, they want two billion, not one billion. Mm. Victim best <laughs> yeah. justice. Yeah. Yeah. Victim best restoration of communities. In other words, we should not be opportunistic about serious matters in our mm. country. Mm. I'm, I'm very sensitive about okay. that. I hear you. In terms of that the ills that we have today were orchestrated by Zanpiaf. The culture of toxicity and evil was orchestrated by Zanpiaf. There's no any other way around. We cannot run away from the fact that we are in this mess because of the ruling party. And the ruling party did not understand then. They thought it was okay, but I'm sure most of them, they may not know how to come out of it, but they can all agree or all acknowledge that they really have messed up big time. They messed up big time. It's very sad, but it is a, it is what it is. Now there's an issue of moral, which is how do you uh, subscribe? You know, like he said, he said he's going to uh, reserve a one billion US dollars towards the Gukrahundi part, which the point he brought is such a powerful point of saying, how did we come up with the one billion US dollars? I remember when that was, um, you know, pointed out and there was someone who was very upset from Ndeveli tribe and say, you guys are using it as a bait to find your way back into the political circle, which I cannot say because I don't know. But what I would suggest is that like what Mtambara is saying, I completely agree with him because I remember one day I watched a video of a woman who was very upset. And I want you guys to take a listen to what the pastor is going to say. He's also said the problem that we have in Zimbabwe is we think it's about the money. Everything is not always about the money and material things, guys. We have lost the aroma and the reason for living. It's not always about the money. Sometimes it just requires your mouth speaking truth or your mouth apologizing. Just say you're sorry. Maybe that's what they want. They may not even need a billion dollars. Because guys, I can only give this example. I want to use this analogy quickly. Let's say you and your husband, you're always having issues. You know, you're, For those that are married or even in a partnership in terms of a boyfriend and girlfriend, this man or this woman treats you like trash. And one day, she, you or she decides to go to Louis Vuitton, brought you this beautiful gift. Is that going to solve the problem? Or she can give you $20,000 or runs. Is that going to solve the problem? You may take the money, but it didn't solve the problem because there was no a sincere apology. But I also don't think that um, Sylvia was going to just say, we'll give you the money. Definitely, there were going to be rituals um, or steps to be taken in terms of reconciliation, healing, and I suggest that there will have to be a point where we actually deploy um, all the psychologists to go in and really talk to these families. These families want someone to hear them out. Because the truth is trauma is real, guys. Trauma is real. And I'm not going to lie. Trauma is real. But I hope we learn one or two things from this situation where we have to understand that there is power when it comes to how we treat each other. The Gukura won't issue the worst of them all. When I heard about some of atrocities, unbelievable that that could be done by a human being. But what can we say? This is the culture that we've built over the years. And you saw one of my brother, whom I love, may you so rest in peace. My heart is bleeding fire today because of Tinashe that you stoned to death. This is the kind of culture that Zampiaf have built. A culture of violence, of pain. A culture that is excruciating. That sometimes I ask, what did we do to you? How can we pay you back in order for us to be free? Is there anything that we can do to some PF people so that our people can be free? That's just my take. But what can we do? We have to find ways to heal. So moving on, I would like you guys to take a listen. Let's go to the coup now. You you know I've lifted my hands in a number of times and said, I'm not apologizing for having supported sure. Mangago because mm. I believe at that particular time that you could have changed. Do you, do, were you yourself maybe also hoodwinked? Because I was reading your book mm -hmm. and you say um, in the preface, you say, the removal of Zimbabwe's strongman, long serving President Robert Mugabe by a people backed coup d'etat in November 2017 was greeted with euphoria, excitement, and high expectations. What was your initial assessment? My that? assessment was that there was an opportunity for change. 
There was so much goodwill in the country in Zimbabwe, so much goodwill in Sadak, so much goodwill in the continent and globally after the departure of Mugabe, which goodwill was squandered by lack of intelligence, by lack of strategic thinking. A different leader in 2017 could have created an opportunity of delinking with the past. So I am very clear that there was an opportunity because it was a Zimbabwean moment, not a ZANU-PF moment. Not an individual moment. Not at all. But however, there was lack of leadership yeah. on the part of those who were propelled into power by the coup d'etat. In me. particular, as we've discussed earlier on, yeah. Emerson Mnangagwa. Tell, yeah. tell me, having been close to Emerson Mnangagwa as Deputy Prime Minister, um, having seen the man, are you surprised that things have turned the way they did, particularly given the fact that you're saying there was an opportunity which was missed? And some of us thought he will realize that there's an opportunity, but he didn't. Are you surprised that he didn't see the opportunity? With hindsight, I'm not surprised because um, the ability is very minimal there. The competence is very minimal there. He's not a very able man. Uh, in, in fact, in many fronts, there's one, the failure to take advantage of the opportunity presented as the coup and the issue of ethnicity and tribalism. You know, people don't like using it, tribalism. We went through the Zulu tribalism in this country for 37 years, where Mjuru and Mugabe were running this as a Zulu uh, hegemony. You'd expect uh, someone coming in to do something different. We also went through Gukurahundi anyway, forget that. So you'd expect a leader who learns from history to say, this is a no-no. We don't do that. What we get from this guy, he's worse than Mugabe in terms of tribalism. It's actual clansmanship, family, eh? Karanga hegemony in this country. Given all we know about the history of the liberation struggle, Chitepo's death, Kukurahundi, and Mugabe's Zizu hegemony, you'd expect a leader who's able to learn to say, we don't do this. Let's build a nation. So I'm very disappointed by the lack of capacity to learn from history, the lack of strategic thinking, the economy. Look at the economy, you know, as the state of our infrastructure, the state of our politics. I would expect someone to say, look, why don't I leave Zimbabwe? And, and you expected that you would do that, isn't it? I, I thought, you know, if I was coming in after Mugabe, I'll be, I want to leave a legacy of the rule of law. I want to leave a legacy of constitutionalism. I want to leave a legacy of a prosperous nation. Because, I mean, liberation was done by Mugabe and Gomu, done. So, so my legacy would be yeah. around the law, mm -hmm. around the economy, around a nation as opposed to ethnicity. Mm -hmm. But again, it's not happening. And I put it to a lack of vision. All right. What do you expect? Um, I think... He literally took words out of my mouth. I'm a person who believes in the power of legacy so much. And you've seen how I advocate about families. Because I'm a firm believer that if we build strong families, it's easier for us to build a stronger community and then a stronger nation. But you've seen over the years how our families are dilapidating. You know, a husband is there, a wife is there. Because all ZANPF, ZANPF like vision. And there's this entitlement mentality in them. They feel like they own Zimbabwe. But I'm here to say to you, you have no title deeds for the country and you, do, you are not 100% shareholders of that nation. So you should understand that every Zimbabwean deserves a, a piece of that nation. And you must be respectful towards your brothers and sisters. This violence nature of yours, it will come with consequences. Time will deal with that, right? Like I've always said. Now, the other problem is people who don't know how to separate the power, family and, you know, I personally have fallen a victim of that in business where you bring families and if, if they're not qualified enough to do certain things, sometimes it comes with a cost, heavy cost. Yes, I'm telling you. So when if a person is in a place of leadership, it's not advisable to bring your families in because at the end of the day, it's not about you, it's really about the nation. Then the issue of lack of capacity. You know, one thing that you must always know is that when people... Um, People don't really know how to identify their strength and their weaknesses. And if you know how to identify the two, it will make your life very easy. You don't have to fight with people. Now you know what you can do and what you cannot do. Now you know where you can fit, where you can contribute and where you cannot. And it's okay to say, 
I'm not good at this. You know, please try someone else. They saw an abuse of state resources. You know, as when the moment you bring families in, then the families are doing as the police because they think like they're owning the place. You know, it worries me the most, especially when I look at Mugabe's kids. You know what Mugabe did? Today, those kids, I'm sure they're vulnerable. Like, they, they are weaker as hell because they were stronger because they had that covering. So when the lid went off, every, they just fall apart. You can see the kids. It's it's very sad to watch. But I wanted you to listen to what Senegam said because Senegam is alleging that there was a time he had reported to the president that, um, the, to ED, that the kids were busy taking min mines that would belong to vulnerable people. Take a listen. Time I went to him uh, to, to raise uh, issues around uh, uh, his children, how they were moving around, uh, stories, we're hearing stories about them taking uh, mining claims from this poor guy, from that poor guy from this area and that area. And I said to him, no, look, Comrade President, I'm your political commissar of the Youth League. And when I'm going out there, my duty is to mobilize the recruit and organize for the party. We are going out there to mobilize people to support you. And, and what your children are doing is making my job very difficult as a commissar, because I'm not gonna be able to mobilize people who are disgruntled. And the next day, I, I got a call I will not mention who called me, but from the family, saying, what are... Uh, what, from, who, who, from the Nangago family. From the Nangago family. Say, whom do you think you are? I said, no, I'm, I'm a commissar. Why can't you mention the name? I mean... No, I, I, I don't want to, like, personalize okay, issues. Because some fine. of them are not politicians. Okay, so they, I, they, I think I, I can, uh, I'm comfortable talking about President Munangagwa because he's a politician and... and, and we, I respect that. Yeah. I respect that. Mm, so you get a call? Yeah. So I said, no, look, uh, you, you, you are making my job very difficult as a commissar because you are using uh, President Munangagwa's name in whatever that you are doing. And, and he is the man who is in front of us as our leader, who go to the people and mobilize people to, to support him. And it won't be easy for us to do that because... People are disgruntled with the way you, you are conducting your, yourselves. So, so whatever that you think, I don't care. But I told President Munangagwa about what you guys are doing, doing and you have to stop it. And he said, okay, uh, continue. We'll see who will win. And I said, no, I, I don't care. If you think that being a commissar is a favor for me, I will resign. And the following day, I wrote a letter. It's very sad. You can see what he said. You can hear him saying that um, he received... A call but he didn't disclose from who but he received a call from someone important only god knows who doing what protecting the kids not protecting the leaders of the country but protecting the kids again it's a lack of understanding because you know you need to remember that you're answerable to the people of zimbabwe not to your kids yes you can love your kids but tell them my kids i love you my babies but there is a fine line you know between business and personal or between my work and personal check how other presidents are doing it's very sad. Zuma did the same. The sons and the daughters are messing up the things of the country. And another very sad story was for Monzora and the daughter. I remember the daughter talking all manner of nonsense, disrespecting Chamisa. Now when everything fell apart, it's a shame. You know, presidents must always remember, if you're a leader, and leaders in general, that if you're called to be in a certain space, if your children are also not called to be in a certain space, you've seen how pastors' kids can mess up the church, because there's that entitlement mentality of saying it's my father's stuff. It's not your father's stuff or my father is in charge. No, it's not. Your father is fulfilling purpose. And sometimes God may even speak to him to do with people that are not even there to be the one that takes over from him. It is very sad to watch. But what can we say? There's always that entitlement mentality. All right, again, that's it for me, guys. Thank you very much for hanging out with me. I'm super excited, guys. I cannot wait to see you in my next upload. So guys, I'm asking you to subscribe to the channel. Make sure you turn on the notification button because this place is definitely your home. I love you all, guys. See you in my next upload. God bless you all and bye. Share some love and kiss your families, your husband, your wives, and your kids and tell them I love them. And God bless you. Bye for now.